Okay, Lisa, go ahead with your question. You are live on the air. Hi, Rabbi. How about you? Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Go right ahead. Okay. Um, so, I was lied to by Christianity for a very long time, and because of that, I'm an atheist. Um, and my question is, my deal is the truth. I don't want to believe any lies. That's not my thing. So how do I know what truth is and how do I trust any religion after being lied to for 40 years? I want you to know, Lisa, the God that you don't believe in, I don't believe in either. But it does a lot of damage when after so many years you become very cognizant that the information that you've been scouring and studying is completely mendacious, illogical, irrational, and convoluted. And how do you trust anyone? That's what you said. And the key of the Torah is that Hashem wants a personal relationship with you without any Jesus. Now, in the Christian Bible, people are encouraged to pray in the name of Jesus. In fact, in the Christian Bible, it openly says, that there is no way to God except through Jesus. That Jesus is the way, the truth, and life. You can come to the Father except through Jesus. And that's what goes on in church. Like right now, as we're speaking, there are church services all over the United States. There's tens of millions of people in churches right now. And what are they doing in churches? I'll tell you. Praying to Jesus, the, the G, if you would stand in a church with a counter, a clicker, and every time you hear the name Jesus, you clicked, by the time you left that service, whether it's a Southern Baptist service or it's an Assemblies of God service, which is a little different, or a Roman Catholic service or an Orthodox Christian service, it's just Jesus from the minute you walk in to the minute you walk out. This show is viewed by many people who are or were Christians and know that I'm not mischaracterizing this. It's Jesus from beginning to end. And that Jesus, that God, you really should want nothing to do with. The Torah, however, is very unique. It's unique in a very striking way in that it is predicated on a national experience, not taking someone's word for it. In other religions, you've got to take somebody's word for it. But really, the Torah is a, a f my family album. It's a record of a nation that had a direct encounter with God. Now, just if you think about this for a moment, this is not some odd idea that I have. If you explore this for a moment, you'll realize that the vast majority of the world, on the, the vast majority of people on this planet believe in God, the, in the higher power. The numbers could be in like 95%, something like that. The majority of the people on this planet believe that the Torah is a holy book majority. And in fact, the Torah predicts this in Deuteronomy 4. And Deuteronomy 4 tells us, just look at the first dozen verses. It says that the nations will be stunned by your Torah and will be stunned by the Jews and say, what a wise people is that has such a wise Torah. What nation is this? So the Torah predicts this. The Torah tells us this. Now, use your head a little bit. You know what Occam's razor is? It's a, it's a basic premise that in explanation for any phenomenon that has the fewest hypotheses is most likely to be the case. You understand? And any accretion any hypothesis on top of the original belief is just less likely to be true, right? How do I, I'll just use very simple terms. 
the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, the Mormon, the LDS Church, is a, a spin-off of Protestant Christianity, okay? It's a 19th century religion that began in the first half of the 19th century, in the, in the early 1800s, right? Now, just, just so you understand, so Mormonism is another layer on top of Christianity, right? So therefore, it is just logical, logical, as in I'm using something that everyone's going to be able to get, is therefore makes sense that it is whatever you would assign to the likelihood that Christianity is true, it's just less likely that Mormon is true because it requires another hypothesis that you have to believe that this character, Joseph Smith, in the 1820s encountered the angel Moroni, gold plates, which he translated. It just is a later, it's another hypothesis. It's more of a deserve on top of a deserve, more craziness on top of craziness. I apologize for using it. I don't mean to be there. In the same way, you know, you have whatever uh, Trinitarian Christianity is an accretion on top of an earlier iteration of Christianity, and it's a later development. So that whatever is a development requires another hypothesis. It's just less likely to be true. And therefore, you know where I'm going with all this. It obviously makes sense to begin with what is the original statement? What is the original source? Which kuli alma loi pligi, that the whole world doesn't, this, when I say the world, I mean uh, people who are of the Abraham, that the Torah is from Hashem. What? Now, does the majority of the world believe the Torah is a holy book because they're so crazy about Jews? No. Does the majority of the world appreciate the Hebrew Bible, which the Christians call the Old Testament, because the Jews are such a big hit? No. There are certain features in the Hebrew Bible, specifically in the Torah, that are completely unique. There was nothing like it before, nothing like it after. And the Torah actually says there never will be anything before or after. And that is the national revelation at Mount Sinai, number one. That means that when God revealed himself at Mount Sinai, the whole nation was there and they heard God speak. They heard it themselves. And the text literally says, you heard it yourself. In fact, the Torah itself says that you should keep these commandments and these laws and be loyal to Hashem because you yourself heard the voice of God. You were there. Now, I want to just think, think this through. Stay with me. Go tight with me on this. Somebody wrote that Torah and someone Somebody intelligent wrote it, whatever you believe, somebody wrote it, right? Okay. And then whoever wrote it is, is saying that I'm God, right? And he's saying to the reader, you heard the voice of God. You saw no image. All Deuteronomy 4. This is going to be a Deuteronomy 4 night. Who is reading this for the first time? Just ask a logical question. The writer is saying that you heard this with your own ears. You saw the smoke. There was no image. You, and therefore, based on what you saw, be careful. So who's reading it for the first time? Somebody reads it for the first time. Someone encounters this text after it is written. You could be the biggest atheist in the world, but at some point, someone writes Deuteronomy chapter 4, and, and it's given to an audience. And what, what are they going to, if it never happened, what would they ask? They say, I never saw, I never heard anything. Moreover, the text says, listen carefully, if you have any questions about what happened, Ask your elders, ask your father, your elders, they'll tell you about it. Shalavicha, ask your father, he'll tell you. And they will reinforce it. So the text is saying that the testimony that 
demonstrates the veracity of this is not the text, but your elders. Go to the Torah. In fact, the Torah says repeatedly, when speaking as an example about a false prophet or a person who is casting forth blandishments to seduce you into following a false god, so it says there, if the false prophet tells you to worship gods that your fathers didn't know, do not listen to their prophet of dream dreams. Ah, he did miracles, says Parshish A. Ah, he was able to foretell the... It doesn't matter. Why would God allow false religions to do miracles? I'm only testing you to see if you love me. So the core reason for believing in the Torah is because it's a national revelation and the text, I beg you, I beg you, this is going to be a Deuteronomy 4 show. The Torah says the following in Deuteronomy chapter 4. It says, Shall no, please ask yourself, from one end of the world to the other, from the hev- one end of the heavens to the other, has any other nation made such a claim? The Torah is saying that no one else will make such a claim, only you, and live. Now, if you figured out how to pull off a national revelation, you see, the reason why national revelation is credible is because you're there. Like, why do we all believe that 9-11 was a historical event? Because we were there. I, on that horrible Tuesday, had a flight. I had a flight from Newark to Los Angeles on that day. It was in the afternoon with Continental Airlines. I had a flight. I was going to be in a film, in a documentary. I, I don't remember what time it was, but I had a flight that afternoon. And I received a phone call. And in those days, you picked up a telephone. I picked up the phone. And it was my travel agent. In those days, you used the travel agent. The travel agent called me and says, you're not going to be flying anywhere. I said, what are you talking about? And she said, she said go turn on the, on the television. And I turned on, and you know the rest of what happened. And I, I, she called me be, when only the first tower was hit. Then was, I saw the second tower hit live as it was happening. And then every all of us stood there. So it was an event. At the, that day, one of my sisters I knew was in the area of the World Trade Centers. I knew it, and I was petrified. And I tried calling her. There were there were cell phones at the time. I tried calling her, and I there was no answer, and I was shaking. And the whole family was trying to get a hold of her. Because what was happening that day was whatever the cell phone service in that area was, if it was overloaded, or, for whatever reason, it was a big problem to get through to people on the cell phone. I, I, I For that area... If, where the as it turns out, she was not thank God she was not in the buildings. She was in that area of Manhattan. And she of course is fine. So it was a national event that happened to the entire now, do people have a mistaken spin about it and crazy ideas about it and convoluted notions that the Jews were behind it and Israel was behind it, the Mossad was behind it, or that George W. Bush arranged it himself? And that Tower 7 was actually blown up by the Americans. I remember I, was, I worked for Channel 7 at that time, and I spoke to people who were convinced that the Pentagon was completely, there was no plane that flew in. So it is true that people have all kinds of weird, odd theories about it, but it's a national event. We, Because of technology, we were all able to observe that horrific day that forever changed the world, right? So you can't reproduce that. I could tell you that I am here in Jerusalem because I flew here from the Golan Heights by helicopter. Maybe you'll believe me. You'll find it. That, maybe you'll believe me, right? But I, I can't convince you that you too flew by helicopter in Israel. Why? Because you know you didn't. So the national revelation is unique. It's the most credible claim to make, and no one else made such a claim, and we couldn't. If we wanted to go out now and start telling people the God revealed himself to uh, all of us, 
No one's going to believe it. Say, you're a crazy person. I'm watching Seinfeld and nothing happened. So the national revelation, now there's a special relationship between the Jews and the Torah in that the role of the Jew is to be a witness to the, to the world. So we are a witness to the Torah because it happened to us. And the Torah is a witness to the Jewish people. How do you know that the Jews are assigned to be a witness people? It says so. Isaiah chapter 43, verse 10. Atem eidai no mashem, avdi yashabachar to you, my witnesses the Klesh Zon, my servant that I have chosen, so they should know, believe, and understand that I am he, and before me there was no God formed, and va'achrei lo yihye, and after me there won't be, anoiche, anoiche, Hashem, ve'ein mulvado yimoshia, and besides me there is no Savior. Isaiah chapter 43, verse 10. Let them hear that in the Vatican and repent. Let them hear the Dallas Theological Seminary and do tshuva. Let them let the, the, those words echo in the halls of Fuller Theological Seminary, and they should mamish do tshuva today. So the foundation of the Jewish faith, the reason it's unique in the world, even though when the world is not crazy about Jews, is because of the national of all the events that happened. It's nothing of the trust that happened there. The whole nation was there, and our job is to be to bear witness to the Torah. And conversely, the Torah Hakadosh, the Holy Torah, bears witness to the Jewish people. And Yisrael the Yerusha, Chadu, we are one in that relationship. Now, are there is there a senator from Vermont? who doesn't want to bear witness to that? There is. He doesn't want any part of that. Is there a Hollywood producer on the West Coast who wants nothing to do with it? For sure. There were plenty of producers in Hollywood in the early 20th century that were very successful. You know where their grandchildren are now? They're gone. Why? Because they didn't want to bear witness to the message to their, all their grandchildren. Some of them did repented, some of them did, or they're all assimilated today because they lost the covenant. Why? Because you can't belong to the club? No, because if you don't want to be bear witness to the Torah, there's no reason for you to remain part of an eternal nation. Deuteronomy chapter 7, verse 9. Thank you so much for your thoughtful question. If you enjoy this program, please like and subscribe. Adon Olah, Asher Malach, Beterem Kol, Yetzir Nivra, Let Nasa, Bechev Tzokol, Azai Melech, Azai Melech, Shemu Nikra, Veachare, Thank you.